Hi, I wanted to take you through an example of a new asset I'm thinking of producing for the asset store to get some feedback on how interesting it is, whether this is something you might use, and any ideas you could have for me to fit into it before I get it into release. So thanks for taking the time. Uh, the asset's all about being able to bring in characters from uh, DAS Studio and also to be able to map any skin mesh renderer into a single draw core character and then also in editor profiling and animation for the characters. So being able to animate the character inside Unity. So to start with, we'll just go and open up the wizard that helps you do this. We'll open up the DAS screen. As you can see, it's got quite a lot of help. It tells you what to do. It tells you, first of all, how to prepare your model and export it from DAS. And what you do is you export your basic character, either Genesis, Genesis 2 female, whatever you want, you export that unmodified and you fit any clothing and hair and accessories onto that unmodified character and export those uh, with their mods baked in. They're the ones who leave the mods alone, but obviously fully describes that. There's some settings here that you might want to use. It's going to create all my models in an assets DAS folder. So next what we need to do is get our base model, the model we're going to use uh, from DAS. So what I'm going to do here is grab uh, in my game folder, I've got some models and I've got one called Working Male New, which is a Genesis model. I'm just going to take the mesh and stick it in this decimated model. So this has been fully decimated. Now one of the, the weaknesses in models directly exported from DAS to Unity normally is that you can't use blend shapes on a decimated model. They stop working, but this fixes all of that. Next, we need to get uh, the definition file for Genesis and I've just put a copy of that on my desktop and it's called Genesis somewhere here there we go Genesis.dsf having got the mm. definition file we need to give it a name so we'll call it demo Genesis or something and then you can see I can hit the processing button here that will create that demo Genesis character map the model onto its variety of different parts and create the thing we need in order to be able to use uh, Genesis inside Unity. That's done. Next what we need to do, you can see it's created this map Genesis shape to demo Genesis. What we're going to do is we're going to import all of the DSS files I've got and this is all of the ones in my DAS 3D library. You can do them one by one if you like but this one will then just go and look for them all and what it will do is it will identify DSS files that match the model we're looking at and allow us to import those and it will skip anything. As you can see now, it's just skipping all the stuff that's got nothing to do with this Genesis character and we couldn't use anyway. And so it'll take a few seconds to do that. So at the end of that process, we've imported 267 morphs and we've ignored 2169, which would do with other characters, or they weren't more files. We can also, if we want to, import Pose 2 format morphs uh, in exactly the same kind of way, but I've got everything I need now in the, uh, in the DAS DSF files. So the next thing we want to do is to, uh, to put the object into the scene, put a character in there. So we'll choose our working male new. We've got the mapping here. We're going to import all of our morphs against it and we're going to call the character Demo Genesis and we'll click Process and that will put that character into our scene and here they are. Now ignore all the pose stuff, we'll be looking at that in a minute as I show you the animation stuff, but let's have a look at the front of this character first. So here is Demo Genesis and if we select the Genesis shape in here we can then start looking at adding morphs to it. You can see it's got this morph behavior script and here are those 267 things we've imported next to that. So let's have a quick look at that for a moment. So we'll do something obvious like body volume and we'll add that as a morph and we'll increase the body volume. As you can see usual morphing stuff. Let's go and have a look at the face and let's give him a tough guy face maybe. So let's go FBM tough guy. There we go. FHM tough guy should mean. We'll add that as a morph. And uh, there he is, our tough guy. Okay, so pretty straightforward to set those morphs up. 
Now, the next thing I'm going to do is put some clothing on this character. And actually, what we need to do is we need to fit the clothing and map it onto the unmodified character. So as you can see, we can import all the morphs and do the morphing here. We don't do it in dance, we do it here. So I'm just going to go back and remove those morphs and put Genesis back to being the somewhat androgynous Genesis that it originally is. And I've got a model over here called uh, Jacket Alone. And I'm just going to add that to my scene. And you can see Jacket Alone is set up to fit Genesis unmodified. So what we need to do now is we need to get the jacket model and we're going to drop that underneath the Genesis character. And we're going to click on that. You can see it's got a mesh renderer. That's all it's got at the moment. If we go back to the Easy Unity DAS window and go to Clothes, you can see it tells us through what we need to do. But it's, uh, it's spotted the fact that we can add clothing item to B25H jacket shape. So I'll just do that. You can see over here, that is now added. The first thing we need to do is map it. Now what uh, Easy Unity DAS does is, whilst it does mapping similar to uh, a couple of other things that, that can put DAS clothing on, it actually reskins the model when you build it. So although uh, when you'll see as we morph the model, the clothing will morph with it after we've done this mapping, actually in between those modifications of the morphs, the jacket is bonded to the skeleton of the character, so we don't need to do uh, any complex, expensive processing every frame to keep the jacket in the right place. So we've done that now. It's mapped onto the character. So if we go back and we select, <coughs> we select our Genesis shape, and let's see, yeah, let's add basic child. So currently he's a man, and now he's a boy, and so on and so forth. So it's very easy for us to get all of these things Oops, that, ooh, let's not have emaciated, let's have uh, body volume again. So we'll make him big, and as you can see, the jacket continues to modify to fit him whilst that all happens. So uh, yeah, we could go and make him uh, an alien. We're adding Starman. And there he is, an alien wearing a jacket, and off you go. Now at the moment, if you look at this character, the character itself, has 26 draw calls associated with it. And that's because there are 26 materials that make up this character. And then we can add the jacket on, so that's another draw call. So currently, that character, whilst fairly low poly, because I'm using a decimated model, is rather a large number of draw calls. And we could have lots of different materials and things on here. So that's where being able to do a mesh combination comes in handy. So if we go over here a second to the etc. Uh, we can basically bake a character and put in uh, uh, a mesh. And we can do that uh, either by adding a skin mesh combiner or we can do it in code using this code over here. So let's go back to our Genesis character and let's add a skinned mesh combiner. So our skin mesh combiner is here. Uh, you can see it's going to use, um, it uses a special shader supplied by the package. It can use versions of that that do two-sided. Um, that's fairly normal for clothing. As you can see, we can sort of, at the moment, because we're using a one-sided shader, the inside of the jacket collar doesn't look right. So when we combine this thing to make it one draw call, we also probably want to draw those back faces. So we can do that. Um, it's going to make a texture atlas, and we can say what the maximum size of that is. So let's say it's going to be 512 by 512. And then we can basically hit the combine button. And we now have a one draw call version of that character. You can see the old one has been removed and the new one, which just has a single material, has now been created. So we've got that character. Now we can no longer modify it once we baked it, but we have got a one draw call character. So you can easily imagine uh, a dressing room scene where you keep the character separate and then you can bake one and this will export it and stick it in a file so you can load it into any scene directly afterwards and uh, and that's pretty powerful right it's uh, it gives you a great deal of flexibility and this remapping shader that we use allows us to change the color of lots of bits of the character as well so we can do we can do a lot with that and we can uh, recolor uh, various bits of the character using a variety of different different techniques uh, so we could for instance change the color mode of the uh, Genesis shape to being tint and we could tint the Genesis shape more red and click on recolor and you can see he will go 
uh, nasty shade of red. So that still, even though we've got only one draw call, we've still got the ability to recolor tint the parts of the character uh, and still make it fully, fully vouchable. Uh, we can also use recolor, and you can turn one color into another color. And uh, basically that, that allows you to do things, and we'll look at that on the jacket, so let's turn that off a second. <coughs> Uh, see, let's, decide, let's make it white a second and click on recolor. Oh, I've completely made him too white, haven't I? Never mind. Uh, okay, what we'll do now is we'll change the color of the jacket. So we'll make the jacket recolor. And what this does basically is says, turn what would be in the underlying image grayscale replace white in that grayscale with something. So let's make his jacket uh, some kind of, uh, let's make it purple, a darkish purple to, uh, this is what would have been black in the grayscale. So we'll make it an even darker blue. And we can hit recolor. And you can see we're starting to recolor those parts of his jacket like so. So let's say we don't really like that. It's still a bit too bright. We want to go right down here somewhere, click on recolor. And so we get the colour of the jacket we're interested in having. Like so. So now we've got a single draw call optimised character. I'm just going to make him slightly less bright. Let's go and tell you the colour mode of that is tint. And we're going to tint him uh, down here somewhere. OK, there we go. Well, that looks more like what I'm after. Some weird kind of alien tinted up with a green jacket on rather than the brown jacket we imported. And you could see how that, without actually having lots of materials, um, can be very powerful for creating lots and lots of different characters uh, out of one set of models. So one of the other things that uh, we, I wanted to add with, with this Easy Unity is the ability to pose characters and animate characters inside the interface. Now often, most of the time, you're going to want to import an animation, but sometimes you just need to kind of get a character to reach a certain point or whatever. So I'm going to switch on the pose mode of this character. So now we're going to pose a character, and we've got a couple of ways of doing this. You can see all these little purple dots represent the bone positions. And we've got two modes of doing this. We can do this using uh, an inverse kinematics mode. So let's take this right index finger here. And you can see using this, we can start pulling that right index finger around to try and put it where we want it to go. And it will follow that cursor. We can move up through the bone hierarchy. So we could pull that forearm over here. Maybe we'll go down a bit. Move the hand over this way. And then we'll go and we'll select this hand. And we'll move that down and around. We can obviously spin that around to see them from different angles to be able to use these little helpers a bit better. And we can also rotate them. So this tool over here lets us rotate the joint as well as positioning it by dragging. So rotating basically rotates what comes beneath it. And we'll go down a little bit further to the hand again, the carpal there, and pull that across the body. So you can see, well, one, all that uh, jacket is rigging alongside, skinned alongside the model, so it's just moving. We don't need to do anything clever with that. And we don't need to keep running anything. Oh, I've got that finger pointing in a very strange way of mine. Let's get that right index finger and just uh, move it down a bit. And we can pose him however we want to like that. We've got another mode as well. If we turn IK mode off, what we can do is choose part here. And you can see a sphere of influence appears. That's a sphere through which that bone may travel. So we're looking at the forearm bone, and at the moment it's on this edge of the sphere. If we just click, it will take it through the back of the sphere, which is not what we want in this case. So we'll press the Shift key, and it will take it through the front of the sphere. So back and front. And it basically moves it in those points that you can do it. It quite, works quite well on the legs, so let's try one down on the leg here. That's where the shin can go, so we can take the shin back through any part of this sphere. And then if we go down to the foot, again, take that back 
all the way up through this part of the sphere. And as you rotate it, the character around, you can do quite a lot to, to get exactly the angle you're looking for, either for the front or the back, as you can see like this. Then we'll take it up like that. And again, you can rotate the foot beneath it if you wish and position the, the item through that sphere of influence. You can save these poses. Why <laughs> we want to save this pose, I have no idea. Let's call it silly. And then you've got a gallery here of all the different poses that you've got for the variety of different things that you're, you're moving. So if we wanted him to go into this pose, we can put him in test pose, back to silly, and so on and so forth. Now obviously that needs to work with the animation system, and it clearly does. So if I click done on that, we can go and open the animation window. And let's drop that down here. And let's uh, select Genesis and Hierarchy, record a new animation called Dummy. And then we can take any one of these points, and we can move the hands around, pull that finger down, and across a bit. Pull this arm over this way. Let's try to straighten the head a bit. And we've got a silly animation for our character, like so. Let's do something with his feet and this one. Let's take uh, this foot. Up to the actual foot. And we'll get out of IK mode. We'll take his foot backwards through the animation. Probably want to get him to move this foot slightly to the right at the same time. We'll do that in IK mode. We'll just push that foot, not the big toe on the foot. like so. So we can still do this with the character, of course, if they're merged together. So we'll add these skin mess combiner back to this one. And we'll click combine, create a single draw call character, and as you can see, still with a single draw call character, same animation absolutely straightforward way of doing that, IK or directly positioned 